Today we're looking at part three of the parable or the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And I really wanted to focus on what happens today after uh, both die. One is carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom and the other is in torment in Hades. You see, everything is everything comes to light when uh, we are faced with death. When death comes to a person, there's no more hiding, there's no more, uh, uh, there's nothing to kind of be deluded with. We're faced with the light of God and in, in the face of the light of God, we see things as they really are. And we see that Lazarus was comforted and the rich man was not. What's amazing is that though, uh, you know, the Lord is very strong and very hard and very clear about what he thinks about selfish, uh, wealthy uh, living. It's very interesting to see that that Lazarus or the image of heaven here is Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham. Now, Abraham was an incredibly wealthy man and yet what's different about abraham why is abraham there the difference between the nameless rich man and abraham is that abraham lived as a pilgrim on this earth he never allowed possessions to be anything to him they meant nothing he was a pilgrim he was a stranger in this land in fact uh, you know there's a story in the old testament where where uh, his shepherds and his nephew Lot's shepherds were arguing. And Abraham does the most amazing thing. He comes and he says to him, Lot, I want you to put your eyes on any land. You see, it's yours. I'll take the other one. Now, now Abraham is the patriarch. He's the older one. Lot, his nephew, should have at least, you know, offered him that. You know, you're the older one. No, go ahead. You choose the land. He says, listen, you, you put your eyes to the east, I'll go to the west. You know, I will leave you the best land, whatever land you want, and you take whatever you want. That kind of freedom was the difference between the rich man and Abraham. Abraham sees three strangers coming, and he runs out of the tent, washes their feet, offers them you know, food, uh, tells Sarah to prepare, you know, fatted calf and so on. And so these they're strangers. They're strangers coming. And he hosts them and feeds them. See, the rich man he, in this story saw Lazarus day in and day out. Every time he went out of his gate, he saw him. But he hardened his heart against him. He hardened his heart against Lazarus, whereas Abraham melted just at the sight of a stranger. He melted, he ran, and he joined, and he had fellowship with, and unwittingly, he was serving the Lord. Unwittingly, he ate a meal with the angel of the Lord. And so here we see the, the beauty is that it's not about the wealth, but it's about living like a pilgrim, living uh, hospitably, living, seeking to become small, seeking to fall down at the feet of the strangers like Abraham, seeking to give up land like Abraham to his nephew, telling him, you take whatever you want. To live and dwell in tents, Abraham didn't settle in a, in a home, but rather lived a very simple life in tents, knowing that he's a pilgrim here, knowing that there's nothing that he can take with him. And yet, Abraham has a name. Now, the torment that Lazarus was, that, that uh, the rich man was in, it's amazing because, because of death, he sees things as they are. And we see that he sees Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham and he begs Abraham for mercy and when he doesn't receive mercy he himself is compassionate this rich man his life is transformed 
because he feels just a touch of suffering. He thinks of his brothers and says, I don't want my brothers to go through the same thing. So the so that it's clear to me that in death, things are, are made straight. Things are, are kind of, you know, become clear. The paradox, the, the, the delusion, the illusions are gone. And he sees things as they are. Now, if, if we had asked, if we could just today ask advice from the rich man, from his position, what would he tell you and me? What would he tell me, the rich man of today? He would tell us, I have no doubt, go give it all away. Don't waste a second or a moment or a resource. Don't hoard anything. Don't throw away your food. Don't have so much. Don't close your eyes to the, to the Lazaruses that are around you, that are surrounding you, but rather spend your life becoming like Lazarus. In fact, I am pretty sure if the rich man could come back to life, he would have wanted to live a life just like Lazarus and would have gone to the extreme of asking for more, knowing that eternally he would be in the bosom of Abraham. And so today, let us learn from the nameless rich man. Let us hear his advice. Let us remember that we are not here forever. Have a beautiful day.